Welcome to the Bible Breakdown. It's a black man and woman in America who no longer identify as believers. This show contains adult languages, themes, and isn't meant for children. As black people, we respect the history of the black church in America, but its current state is massively abusive, and we think the Bible might be part of the problem. Listen and let us know what you think. Peace. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown. It's your host, Kat. I am T. And we are starting a new book of the Bible today, and I'm super excited about it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> You're not excited? Yeah. This might be what turns us Christian. Like, obviously, being Christian is awesome, which is why people keep trying to convince us to do it. I am not excited at all. Yay! I'm excited for the both of us. Um, I think we're going to get into some rules. I think Deuteronomy is where they have a lot of the uh, gay hate stuff. Okay. So, sorry, gays. I'm always, like, very cute. I mean, I shouldn't be confused by human behavior anymore, but the fact that people are so, like, just tied to this book that it's just so terrible. Um, I don't know. You know, just, just, um, I feel like I've been having enough religious talks lately. So, yeah. Ooh. So, any any you want to share? Um, the guy that I work with is um going to school for the. He's getting his master in theological studies, and um, we had a nice debate on religion and polyamory and shocker we uh, we have opposing views but i will say that um he's not one of those like fuck you if you don't believe what i believe christians so i do appreciate that about him we had a civil talk we were both respectful of each other's opinions um he's also from a country well he's from ethiopia so you know, they were never colonized, um, according to him. Yeah, they're very proud of that. They fought the Italians off. But to be fair, the Italians aren't like they fell off after Caesar. Well, I say that to say that, you know, that's also kind of his excuse for like why um, they. Like Christianity is is a, a what's the word? it's still a big deal for them. Like it's, it's not like, Oh, we were oppressed by Christianity and they gave it to us because we were in slavery for the him. It's like, no, 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 no. We were Christians even without it. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's still pretty oppressive to women. Um, I know some Ethiopian women and man, it's, I mean, I can't talk. It's pretty oppressive over here, too. But, you know, oppression, recognize oppression. Well, according to him and from what I've gotten from a lot of people that I've talked to about this is for them, it is a language of love. God is love. And the way it was explained to me when I was giving pushback was because I said, you know, the typical things like, you know, it seems like the relationship that God has with the people in the Bible is very manipulative and abusive behavior, that of a narcissist. And uh, I was told that, you know, and I was like, well, because his explanation to me was God didn't have to create us. He chose to create us. And I was like, yeah, that's the problem. He didn't have to do it. So why even fucking do it? It just seems like he just did it because he was lonely. And he was like, no, God wasn't lonely. God didn't need us. And then so I was like, well, why did he create us? And he was like, well, you know, you want to have kids. See what it feels like to give a baby, you know. Eight. No, no. Oh. <laughs> His explanation was that being somebody who wants to have kids, somebody who wants to be a father, what is my reasoning for that? And like, oh, that's interesting. That's touche. That was a touche. And he was like, you know, for that, it is we want to share with our offspring this world that we quote unquote cherish in this life that we you know the the things in life that we that we like and i was like you know that was that was good he 
he kind of got me there. And I thought about that more. And the only reason that I feel like anybody would want to be a parent is because we're selfish fucks. <laughs> and it's because no matter how you spin it, it's still a way. Now, you know, not I, I don't assume every parent would be abusive or manipulative. Hopefully not. But at the end of the day, you don't have to be a parent. You choose to be a parent because you want to have something to call your own and to share the things that you think are interesting with somebody who can't really give you pushback until they get older. And so like, no matter how you call that, <laughs> it's still a selfish act. I mean, it is. And I mean, it's, it's self, I mean, I'm a parent. So, I mean, I, 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 I have to admit, like when I had my first child, I was pretty young and I didn't put a ton of thought into it. I just knew I always wanted kids. But I could tell you this, if I had given birth to him and then just like went away for 2000 years when just like left him a book and like nothing else. And I don't know, to me, and to me, it's so confusing, too, because I keep saying Jesus is coming back. It'll he'll be back. Well, we got into that, too, because it's like, how is he? So how is he also in your heart and you have a personal relationship with him? Like, where is he? Oh, we like, got into that, too. So apparently, okay. apparently, <laughs> apparently God, because I, I asked all the questions, all the tough questions about okay. like sin and why everything this shitty is associated with us and free will and, you know, our lack of whatever. And he actually has some good spin, man. I will give it to this guy. He has some good spin because okay. his explanation for, you know, my thing about why the fuck is it my fault for some shit that I didn't even do? Okay. Well, anyway, his spin was that uh, God is, um, you know, my question was, you know, I didn't start the shit. I didn't, I shouldn't have to be put to blame for something that Adam and Eve did if we're even blaming them for, you know, creating original sin. And his, 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 his response back was, well, if you live in a polluted environment, it doesn't matter who did it. You still are going to get, you still are going to feel the effects. I, if, uh, if the, if, 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 like we we're going through global warming. It doesn't matter who started it. It's still you know affecting you in life. It does matter who started it. It does, but it doesn't you because you're still affect. You still are affect. Again, I'm just going by what this guy was telling me. Again, it's good spin. It's good spin. I will. I'll give it to him. Um, spin talk. And then uh, what else did we talk about? We talked about. Um, we didn't really get too much into women's stuff, but I did bring up like, you know, how it, how the Bible seems to be very um, anti-woman. That wasn't my word, but yes, basically anti-woman, anti-homo or anti-homosexual. Um, and so um, his, his, his verbiage to me is people always try to talk about that stuff but we're taking it out of context no we're not we read the whole daggone thing and this is what i was told so anyway uh possibly look forward like, no, to more you're taking it out of context um no actually i feel like they are not taking it with the context i was like i asked him what is the context because you know what I've learned actually, and then we can actually get started is I feel like when I talk to people like this, it's very condescending. It's a very like, and I say that because I don't like when somebody tells me, if I look at something, they're like, oh, oh, you shouldn't take it that way, or you shouldn't. And, and I feel like, no, I'm going to take it the way that I'm going to take it because that's how I'm interpreting it. And that was my whole message to this man was that, you know, you and a lot of people like you will start to say things like, oh, well, you don't take it. People, people are reading it out of context or you guys are taking it wrong. But it's like, no, you're trying to make me think something when in reality, nobody really knows. And we're all just kind of making this up. And I would respect you and people like you more if you would just come out and be like, yeah, we don't. No, we don't know, but we think 
this might be the way. But nobody's going to do that because, as we talked about before, in life, everybody wants somebody around who acts like they know. You know, nobody, I mean, confidence nobody yeah. likes uh nobody likes somebody who's unsure of themselves so yeah, like those jittery nerds so anyway um yeah but anyway it was a good talk with this this gentleman and uh he said i mean know. at least it sounds like he's cool like he's not it sounds like he's not yelling at you and stuff and it's and it, the, here's the thing that's always tricky because i'm sure it is coming from like a good place You know what I mean? I feel like most Christians do feel like they're doing the right thing or they're trying to do the right thing. Like this is what's been branded to them as the way. And there's so much fear, though, like so much of it is based in fear, because I mean, I remember the first time I told like a a relative that, you know, I was questioned, I, you know, I didn't believe anymore. And they were like, well, what about hell? And I'm like, damn, you went there quick. I'm like, I don't believe it. Like that's once again, if you don't believe it, you just don't believe it. And so it's like, no, I'm not afraid of like hell. Like once again, it's really not even, we still haven't gotten into it. We're what, four books? This is, we're about to start the fourth book. That's another thing. (sighs) Apparently we're not using the old testament like that that's what kept what coming up in our con- it for? That what kept what kept coming up in myself in this gentleman's conversation is he kept saying quoting things from the new testament and i was like well what about the old testament the majority of it is the old testament apparently <laughs> it comes off to me is <laughs> it makes it seem like god was kind of like a an angry alcoholic yeah and then he got his life together and then, and he, then he became up and came, became a single dad and had to you know get his life together and that's new down. testament that's new testament god yeah once again but once again the new testament isn't that great either like you don't really get a ton of morality and the stuff that people do point to that's nice is widely regarded by most biblical scholars as forgeries that were added later on so even the good stuff is in the kind of uh, I think this gentleman would argue that with you. So whatever. And also, too, because most of the writing in the New Testament, too, is from Paul. And I don't trust that dude. And he was very anti woman. He's the one who wrote the stuff about no chicks talking in church. Hilarious, <laughs> especially since uh, on P Valley, that woman is now a pastor. I love Loretta Devine, Miss Ernestine. When she was like, "How this hoe become a pastor?" <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I love that line. I was so mad there wasn't a new episode this week. I wasn't because it gave me a chance to catch up. I guess that's why they did it. But I was all ready. I had my lasagna. I was like, "Ooh, let me sit up here and get thick and watch P Valley lasagna." Yeah, I don't feel like that's black enough for that show. But anyway. Uh, actually, anything I want to eat is black because I manu- my, I manufacture my blackness daily. So, blackness is not a monolith. It's not, and plus, like whatever, whatever little is, it's thickening. <laughs> okay, <laughs> show will make you want to get thick. <laughs> it does. I have some very beautiful proportioned women on there. Cool. It's bonkers. Okay, let's uh let's take a quick break and then we'll read it because this first one is a long one. Okay. All right. Ooh, okay, welcome back for real to the Bible breakdown. Yeah. We're um we're gonna get into the word, man. It's Deuteronomy time, trying to get down to these laws. Yeah, all right, Deuteronomy. Vince and Horeb are called. These are the words these are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan. In the wilderness on the plain opposite Sup, between Paran and Topol, Laban, Hazareth, and D Zahab, by the way of Mount Seir, it takes eleven days to reach Kadesh Barnea from Horeb, from Horeb. Uh, we're reading the new Arad Standard Version, everyone, just in case you didn't know. 
In the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses spoke to the Israelites just as the Lord had commanded him to speak to them. This was after he had defeated King Sheehan of the Am. Armorites who reigned in Heshbon, and King Og of Bashan who reigned in Ashtaroth, and Edrei uh, beyond the Jordan in the land of Moab. Moses undertook to expound this law as follows The Lord our God spoke to us as Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Resume your journey and go into the hill country of the Amorites as well as in the neighboring regions. The Araboth, the hill country, the Shephelah, the Negab, and the seacoast, the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euph- Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you go in and take possession of the land, and I swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their descendants after them. Appointments of tribal leaders. At the time I said to you, I am unable by myself to bear you. The Lord, your God, has multiplied you so that today you are as numerous as the stars of heaven. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised you. But how can I bear the heavy burden of the disputes all by myself? Choose for each of your tribes individuals who are wise, discerning, and reputable to be your leaders. You answered me. The plan you have proposed is a good one. So I took the leaders of your tribe, um, wise and reputable individuals, and installed them as leaders over you. Commanders of thousands, commanders of hundreds, commanders of fifties, commanders of tens, and officials throughout your tribes. I charged your judges at that time. Give the members of your community a fair hearing and judge rightly between one person and another, whether citizen or resident alien. You must not be partial in judging. Hear out the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone, for the judgment is God's. Any case that is too hard for you, bring to me, and I will hear it. So I charged you at this time with all the things that you should do. Israel's refusal to enter the land. Jesus. Um. Then just as God, just as the Lord, our God had ordered us, we set out from Horeb and went through all the great and terrible wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites until we reached Kadesh Barnea. I said to you, you have reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord, our God has given us. See, the Lord, your God has given the land to you. Go up, take possession as the Lord, the God of your ancestors has promised you do not fear or be dismayed. All of you came to me and said, let us send man ahead of us to explore the land for us and bring back a report to us regarding the route by which we should go up in the cities we will come to. The plan seemed good to me, and I selected 12 of you, one from each tribe. They set out and went up into the hill country, and when they reached the valley of Eshkol, they spied it out and gathered some of the land's produce. Which they brought down to us. They brought back to a report to us and said, It is a good land that the Lord our God has given us. But you were unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, It is because the Lord hates us that he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us. Where are we headed? Our kindred have made our hearts melt by reporting the people are stronger and taller than we the cities are large and fortified up to heaven we actually saw there the offspring of the anakim i said to you have no dread or fear of them the lord your god who goes beyond who goes before you is the one who will fight for you just as he did for you in egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness where you saw how The Lord your God carried you just as one carries a child all the way that you traveled until you reached his place. But in spite of this, you have to, but in spite of this, you have no trust in the Lord your God who goes before you on the way to seek out a place for you to camp fire in fire by night and in the cloud by day to show you the route you should take the penalty for Israel's rebellion. When the Lord heard your words, he was wrathful and swore. 
not one of these, not one of these evil generations shall see the good land that I swore to give to your ancestors, except Caleb, son of Jeff. Une. Jeff, Une. he shall see it and to him and to his descendants. I will give the land of which he has set foot because of his complete fidelity to the Lord. Even with me, the Lord was angry on your account, saying, You shall, you shall, you also shall not enter there. Joshua, son of Nun, your assistant shall enter there. Encourage him, for he is the one who will secure Israel's possession of it. And as for you, and as for your little ones who you thought would become booty, your children who today do not yet know right from wrong, they shall enter there. To them, I will give it and they shall take possession of it but as for you journey back into the wilderness in the direction of the red sea you answered me we have sinned against the lord we are ready to go up and fight just as the lord our god commanded us so all of you strapped so all of you strapped on your battle gear and thought it easy to go up into the hill country the lord said to me say to them do not go up and do not fight for i am not in the midst of you Otherwise, you will be defeated by your enemies. Although I told you, you would not listen. You rebelled against the command of the Lord and presumptuously went up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in that hill country then came out against you and chased you as bees do. They beat you down in Seir as far as Hormah. When you returned and wept before the Lord, the Lord would neither heed your voice nor pay your pay you any attention. The desert years. After you had stayed at Kadesh, as many days as you did uh it's there is that it thanks be to god that was, that was super duper i mean why why not have it in like that <laughs> i mean what else did we come to expect from the bible like that who knows like that it might have originally gotten cut off it sounds like god was kind of going off because i think he's recounting the time that they went off the the 12 men who went to spy on mm -hmm. canaan 10 were bad and two were good and he's leaving out the part that the reason why they didn't go because the majority of the scouting trip was like it's not looking good guys yeah and also too it's really messed up to invade people's lands oh like, whoa, whoa, whoa 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 according to the guy i talked to it's not just invading anybody's land. These were people who are bad people. These were people who were full of sin and God had to get rid of them. That's why we invaded them. That's why. It also sounds like the Israelites were full of sin and rebellion. So like, why do, why we all know people are shitty. So that's why we just agree to keep our hands off each other stuff because like everybody feels like I'm entitled to that. I should have that. Why does, why do they have that? And I don't you know, hate, 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 hate. Like there's all this, it, this is insanity. This is obviously written by a warlord. I don't have anything to say. Carry on. Uh, I mean, it just, that's what it sounds like to me. This just sounds like it was just kind of wrapping up some stuff that we went through back in um, numbers. It has and, a tendency uh, to repeat things that started. it already has done it does. and give you and we're like, Josh and Caleb are cool, but, you know, fuck Moses and all the old people for some reason. And it's like, why did you once again, this is just I'm not feeling a lot of respect for the God character or the Lord. Well, maybe Deuteronomy and me too will help you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's so weird. Okay, so it literally is like a to be continued. Uh, so you left off and the, the thing said the desert years. After you stayed at Kadesh as many days as you did, comma, now we'll start Deuteronomy 2. We journeyed back into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea as the Lord had told me and skirted Mount Seir for many days. Then the Lord said to me, you have been skirting this hill country long enough. Head north and charge the people as follows. You are about to pass through the territory of your kindred. The descendants of Esau will live in Seir. They will be afraid of you. So be very careful not to engage in battle with them, for I will not give you even so much as a foot length of their land since I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. You shall purchase food from them for money so that you may eat. And you shall also buy water 
from them for money so that you may drink. Surely the Lord your God has blessed you and all your undertakings. He knows you're going through this great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. Pause. Not true. Remember when he like gave them all plague and like sent snakes and stuff? Do you remember that? I do that? remember that. Just like it was yesterday. Okay. Even though it was years and ago. And then like they... <laughs> And saying they lacked nothing like I remember them complaining a lot about the food situation and I bet they were probably dying of disease as well because there's no soap or plumbing whatever sorry let me not disagree with the Lord <clears throat> these 40 years the Lord your God has been with you you have lacked nothing so we passed by our kin the descendants of Esau who lived in Seir leaving behind the root of the Arabah and leaving behind Eleth and Ezion Giver. When we had headed out along the route of the wilderness of Moab, the Lord said to me, Do not harass Moab or engage them in battle, for I will not give you any of its land as a possession, since I have given Er as a possession to the descendants of Lot. Oh, yeah, Lot. Remember when he had sex with his daughters? Uh, that, I feel like that happens with everyone. So, no, I do remember that name, but I don't remember yeah. who the fuck that guy was that was that was Sodom and Gomorrah cool Lot and his daughters remember his wife conveniently got turned oh. into salt so he was free to have sex with his husband. Oh, okay daughters. yeah yeah I knew somebody turned back yeah. his wife turned back to look yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so that's really oh, on her so. and actually it wasn't even his fault his daughters got him drunk so it's really those sluts fault the Emim, a large and numerous people as tall as the Anakim had formerly inhabited, like the Anakim, they are usually reckoned as Re Refem, Refem, through the Moabites call them Em. Moreover, the Horem had formerly inhabited Seir, but the descendants of Esau just possessed them, destroying them and settling in their places. Israel has done in the land that the Lord gave them as a possession. Now then, proceed to cross over to the Wadi Zered. So we crossed over the Wadi Zered, and the length of time we travel we had traveled from Kadesh Barna until we crossed the Wadi Zered was 38 years until the entire generation of warriors had perished from the camp. As the Lord had sworn concerning them, indeed the Lord's own hand was against them to root them out of the camp until all had perished. Just as soon as all the warriors had died from among the people, the Lord spoke to me saying, today you are going to cross the boundary of Moab at Ar. When you approach the frontier of the Ammonites, do not harass them or engage them in battle, for I will not give the lamb of the Ammonites to you as a possession because I have given it to the descendants of Lot. It is also, it also is unusual, it is, uh, huh. It also is usually reckoned as a land of Rephim. The Rephim formerly inhabited it, though the Ammonites call them Zem Zemanim, a strong and numerous people as tall as the Anakim, but the Lord destroyed them before the Ammonites so that they could dispossess them and settle in their place. He did the same for the descendants of Esau, who lived by Seir by destroying the Horm before them so that they could dispossess them and settle in their place even to this day as for the Avim who had lived in the settlements in the vicinity of Gaza the Kaftorim who came from Kaftor destroyed them and settled in their place proceed on your journey and crop and across the Wadi Ar and see I have handed over to you King Shihon the Amorite of Heshbon in his land begin to take possession by engaging him in battle. This day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you upon the people everywhere under heaven. When they hear a report of you, they will tremble and be in anguish because of you. The defeat of King Shion. So I sent messengers from the wilderness of Kedemoth to King Shihon of Heshbon with the following terms of peace. If you let me pass through your land, I will travel only along the road. I will turn aside neither to the right nor to the left. You shall see, you shall sell me food for money so that I may eat 
and supply me with water for money so that I might drink, only allow me to pass through on foot, just as the descendants of Esau who live in Seir have done for me. Likewise, the Moabites who live in Ar until I cross the Jordan into the land that the Lord our God has given us. But King Shehan of Heshbon was not willing to let us pass through, for the Lord your God has hardened his spirit and made his heart defiant in order to hand him over to you as he's done now the lord said to me see i have begun to give shihon and his land over to you begin now to take possession of his land so when shihon came out against us he and all his people for battle at jahaz the lord our god gave him over to us and we struck him down along with his offspring and all his people at that time we captured his towns and in each town we utterly destroyed men women and children we left not a single survivor only the livestock we kept as spoils for ourselves as well as the plunder of the towns that we captured for a roar on the edge of the wadi iron including the town that is wadi itself as far as gilead there was no citadel too high for us the lord our god gave everything to us you did not encroach, however, on the land of the Ammonites, avoiding the whole upper region of the Wadi Jabuk, as well as the towns of the hill country, just as the Lord our God had charged. Thanks be to violent, violent God. Yeah, that was extreme. A lot going on. A yep. lot of killing. Yeah. Yep. God don't give a fuck. Taking out those kids because they were sinners. They were. Those, those children... He, the, like I said, they only kept the livestock. They were bragging about it. This was this is awful. It's like this is like Genghis like, Khan type shit. Yes, it is. It's for, actually Genghis Khan wouldn't have been this wasteful. Genghis Khan would have been like, "Yeah, we keeping the bitches." Like that's how we, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, Genghis. Oh, Genghis. And actually, he probably would have kept the kids too and enslaved them. Um. Uh, not that that's great. You know, I don't necessarily admire Genghis Khan um, for his war tactics, but um, and he was rather rapey as well. But this the this seems to have the very same ethos. <sighs> OK, well, moving on to Deuteronomy three, defeat of King Og. I thought that motherfucker was already defeated. Like, why are we rehashing the defeat? I feel like we are. We we're going over some things. Oh, my gosh, dude. This book is just a fucking play replay of everything it's like this is how it's it's persisted. like each chapter is a replay of what happened before and then inside of the replay they give you a little bit new information so then later on down the line they replay that little information while they're still it's just <sighs> jesus yes help us jesus the feet of king ak when we landed up to the road of Bashan, King Og of Bashan came out against us. He and all his peoples for battle of Edre. The Lord said to me, do not fear him, for I have handed him over to you, along with his people in his land. Do to him as you did to King Shion of the Amorites who reigned in Heshbon. Heshbon. So the Lord our God also handed over to us King Og of Bashan and all his people. We struck him down until not a single survivor was left. At that time, we captured all of his towns. There were no citadel and that we did not take from them. 60 towns, the whole region of Argob, the kingdom of Og and Bashan. All these were fortress towns with high walls, double gates and bars, besides a great many villages. And we utterly destroyed them as we had done to King Sheen of Heshbon in each city, utterly destroying men, women, and children. But all the livestock and the plunder of the towns we kept as spoil for ourselves. Yeah. And God is love. That's what I hear all the time. God is love. But this does not sound very loving at all. He loves to kill. Gosh. So at the time we took from the two kings of the Amorites the land beyond the Jordan from the Wadi Arnon to Mount Hermon, the Sidian Sidonian Sidonians Sidonians called Hermon um, Syrian, while the Amorites called it Sinar. 
all the towns of the Tableland, the whole of Gilead, and all of the Bashan, as far as Salika and Edray, town of Og's kingdom in Bashan. Now, only King Og of Bashan was left of the remnant of the Rephraim. In fact, his bed, an iron bed, can sounds very uncomfortable, can be can still be seen in Rabah of the Am- Ammonites. By the common cubit, it is. No, I can't. Okay. By the common cubit, it is nine cubits long and four cubits wide. As for the land that we took possession of that time, I came. I gave to the Reubenites and Gadites the territory north of. Aurora. That is on the edge of the Wadi Arnon, as well as half the hill country of Gilead with its towns. And I gave to the half tribe of uh, Manasseh the rest of Gilead and all of Bashan Ox kingdom. The whole region of Argob, all that portion of Bashan used to be called a land of Re- Rephraim. Jair, Jair, the Manasite acquired the whole region of Argob as far as the border of the Gesherites and the Maccathites. And he named them, that is, Bashan after himself, Hava Jair, as it is to this day. The Makir, I, uh, oh, I'm sorry, to Makir, I gave Gilead. To Makir, I gave Gilead, and to the Reubenites and the Gadites, I gave the territory from Gilead as far as the Wadi Arnon, with the middle of the Wadi as a boundary, and up to Jabak, the Wadi being boundary of the Ammonites. The Arboth also, with the Jordan and its banks from the Chinnereth down to the Sea of the Araboth, the Dead Sea, with the lower slopes of Pishgah of, on the east. At the time, I charged you as follows. Although the Lord, your God, has given you the land to occupy, this land to occupy, all your troops shall cross over armed as the vanguard of your Israelite kin. Only your wives, your children, and your livestock. I know that you have much livestock shall stay behind in the towns that I have given to you. When the Lord gives rest to your kindred, as to you, they have occupied the land that the Lord your God is giving them beyond the Jordan. Then each of you may return to the property that I give that I have given to you. And I changed Joshua as well as and I charged Joshua as well at that time, saying, Your own eyes have seen everything that the Lord your God has done to these two kings so the lord will do to all the kingdoms into which you are about to cross do not fear them for it is the lord your god who fights for you <sighs> moses views canaan from pishka at that time too i entreated the lord saying oh god lord oh lord god you have only begun to show your servant your greatness and your might what God in heaven or on earth can perform deeds and mighty acts like yours? Uh, fucking dick riding. Also, isn't Moses supposed to be fucking dead? Like, how is this nigga still alive? I don't understand. Like, who's I don't. Talking I, right I, now. I don't. I thought it was Moses, but then it, I guess it's not Moses. I don't. It's very. I don't know weird. who's talking. I don't. They're cha- oh, This is bad writing. Yeah, they're really going down in season three right now. Um, starting off with. Oh, four. season four. We're going off. Yeah. Oh, God, you have only begun to show your servant your greatness and your might. What God in heaven or on earth can perform deeds and mighty acts like yours? Let me cross over to see the good land beyond the Jordan, the good hill country in the Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not heed me. The Lord said to me, enough from you. Never speak to me of this matter again. Go up to the top of Pishgah and look around you to the west, the north, to the south, and to the east. Look well, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. But charge Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, because it is he who shall cross over at the head of this people and who shall secure their possession of the land that you will see. So we remained in the valley opposite Beth Peor. I gotta say... (laughs) You know what I think? I feel like what do you think? What do you think? I feel like Tim? the Old Testament is basically just the rough draft. It's like it was like 
Yeah, how can I put this? It's like, you know, when you see like a really old movie or TV show and like it wasn't it was like shit in its time, but then they make the remake or they make like maybe a spinoff or something. And then it's like a blast and people are like, hey, you don't even need to watch the original. Just watch this one. I feel like that's what the New Testament is. It's, it's that it's that part, maybe. I don't know. I haven't got there. We haven't got there yet, but I just felt like the Old Testament is just like they had the idea. They threw a bunch of shit together and they were like, damn. And most people were like, ah, oh, this fucking sucks. But then they were like, somebody else came along and was like, you know what? There's something in here that I could probably put out, but we're going to call it the New Testament. And that's the only part that people are mostly going to read from. I feel like that's what the fuck. But that's not true. Like, people quote the Old Testament all the time, especially because this is where the gay, anti-gay stuff is. Yeah, well, I feel like they only quote the Old Testament when it's um, beneficial to them. Because any other time. Because that's where the child beating is. Spare the rod, spoil the child. That's, that's... in the Old Testament. The Adam and Eve story, that's where we're getting original sin. Like all the like the, it's a big it's a big part of the theology. You can't just be like, my whole problem, here's my whole thing. Cause people will be like, well, that's just the how do you know which parts you're supposed to listen to and which parts are just the parts you're reading it wrong. You're taking like, it out no. of context, man. That's what I'm saying, though. What what is the context? How do I know I'm supposed to do like the and this is also where like you get the don't eat pork stuff. And then they always ignore that because I think that's in this, too, where it's like, don't eat pork. But then this is also where this is like no gay stuff. Yeah. So what are we doing here? Oh. Like, like I said, nobody's reading this. Don't nobody care. Like they just want to get together on Sunday and like just say that. We're still so traumatized from slavery. But, but like, this is not this only is affecting just, black I mean, people, though. It affects white people. This I'm just, but I don't, I mean, yeah, affects brown people. I'm mostly concerned about black people. That's racist. <laughs> I don't care. I didn't come up with a system. We're the ones being oppressed more by this. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what, like, the fact that it's in here and they can always bring it back if they want to, like, this curse of ham stuff. Like how long that was able to ride because they're able to, you know, like prop this up. And the fact that it's so popular amongst, you know, African-Americans who were, you know, legally required to be illiterate. And you, you're made to worship a book you can't read. It's 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 so absurd. Like, I can't, I just, I can't, I don't have the right words. It's to abstract art. How frustrated I am. It's not though. This is actually being very direct. Like it's literature. Like it's literal. Like it's the opposite of abstract. Mm -hmm. That's not what other people have said. But anyway, next time on Deuteronomy four through six, mm -hmm. you'll be witnessing. He's, I feel like I'm gonna you'll hate. Be this. witnessing Moses command obedience. Well, the Ten Commandments. Didn't yeah, we fucking already talk up. about the Ten Commandments? What? I think we're going to be repeating some. Oh. I, think we're, I mean, we're repeating about repeating. Oh, 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 there'll be the Ten Commandments. Moses, the mediator of God's will. Um, there will be the great commandment and caution against disobedience. Mm. So somebody might get their ass whooped. Mm. I don't know. I just thought Moses was supposed to get whacked like seven fucking episodes ago and he's still kicking. So. I mean, these are, it sounds like these are just sort of the accounts. I don't, I don't know who's supposed to be writing this. I don't know who's supposed to be it's this. like, because it not only is, are they like repeating stuff, but they're also kind of like rewrite, like they're whitewashing it a little bit. It's like, you've never suffered. You've never wanted for anything. I've been a great God to you. And it's like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because remember when we was complaining about stuff and you opened up the earth, which, and swallowed which up is a bunch interesting because you said people read from the Old Testament. So my, I wonder when they, because it's so many chapters, it's essentially just a replay of what happened before. I wonder, do people only read the whitewash version? <laughs> like we have the. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody's reading anything, honestly. <sighs> well, welcome to Bible Breakdown Podcast. We read it so you don't have to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just so, I don't know. I need something happy. Like, 
I need to, I need to understand. I do understand in a way why people are so emotionally attached to this, right? I don't. But I do, um, especially because, you know, I was talking about, you know, Black people, American, specifically American Black people, because this was, for one, kept away from us for so long. This was something that was only for the whites, and then they realize, like, hey, if we give them this, they might stop rebelling. Like, this was, it was a very conscious effort to get Black people to stop having And this is just rebellion. Black people. This does, I know you said you only give a shit about Black people. I don't share that sentiment. So it doesn't just affect Black people. I'm, I'm, but I'm saying, I, obviously, but and I, can I just say, too, racism hurts everybody. It doesn't just hurt Black people, but in our American caste system, Black people are on the bottom. And that's right, true. but I mean, if we're going to triage, you know, like in emergency rooms where you go to people who are bleeding out the most, like I feel like right now, the people who are suffering the right, most Black but people. So that's what in my experience about. being around, like, I mean, you would call them Native Americans, but Mexican culture. Like they're hard on this shit too. Like this, and they didn't have the yeah, same. I, ex- I mean, they had a similar experience, Once but not again, the I same can't experience. Speak to them in the same right, and I can't speak to them the same way because that's not my experience. I'm speaking as a black woman, like speaking on black people, like in a way that I'm can specifically do because that's where I'm from. But can I also say too, because the history of America, like you have to understand the history of Europe as well to understand American history because that's what we came out of. And Europeans very much use the Bible to control their serf. They're basically slave class in Europe. Like, you know, people who were serfs, they weren't seen as people. They were whipped. They were sold. Like, it was a very similar structure. And they used the Bible. Well, Ethiopia wasn't colonized, so they didn't go through this but shit. I, neither was neither was Europe. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the actual European peasants who w- were oppressed under this system too. So like understanding that helps to give clarity on the fact that but what's interesting is that even though a lot of people came to America to get out of that system, they perpetuated it with a race-based system over here. And it was harder for black people to escape because we're visually different. Like they tried doing it with like Irish people, but Irish people could escape and blend in with, you know, the Brit quote unquote British white people. So for black people, we can't escape in that way. Like we're always carrying around the curse of ham, as they will call it. So to me, it is a deep betrayal to my ancestors. Like my I wonder what pastors say about the curse of ham since we're we're visually different i wonder how how do pastors like uh once again the curse of some of the people in in our city i wonder how do they articulate once this again, it, i wasn't taught that i just read about it like the church i grew up didn't teach the curse of ham being black people like it doesn't even say that in the bible that's just some shit they made up you know kind of like the trilogy the trinity like that's not in the bible Oh, no, no, no. The Trinity Trinity wasn't made up, according to my guy. But it's not in the Bible. Mm. That's just some shit. Must be taking it out of context. There is no context because it's not in there. Like, it's just some stuff the Vatican made up in what the year 325 to make the math check out so that they're not worshiping three. So they're like one plus one plus one equals one. (laughs) Boom. Nailed it. So, um, yeah, that's just something they came up with. That's not even from the Bible. There's a lot of stuff that's just, um, like I said, usually most people are too tired at the end of their day to even do this, like read the Bible and talk about it, but they pretend they will because we all want to, I think that's the thing. Like what we said earlier, I think most Christians, that's why this is so difficult. It's because they think they're doing a good thing by being like, oh, well, we should just make the whole world Christian. And then. God will stop being mad at us and come back or whatever and kill all the Jews, I guess. I don't know, man. It's weird. And and to be clear, that's not my opinions. I don't want to kill all the Jews. It's just Christianity has a weird anti-Semitic bent to it. So that's just why I brought it up because they don't like in, in one way, they kind of like ride super hard for Jews, but it's only because they want them in Israel so that when Jesus comes back, he can smoke them all. 
Yeah, Jesus is coming back with uh, it's like that Family Guy episode. I don't. Um, Have you seen that? I mean, I've seen a lot. I don't know. Like, it's, so like, it's like it's like Jesus. It's like Jesus. They make fun of the Passion of the Christ, but it's like Passion of the Christ too. I'll I'll send it to you. Okay, it's fucking yeah, hilarious. Send me the clip. It's like Jesus coming back with like semi automatics and like going against That's the people. The fantasy though, people. where it's like, oh, he's the Prince of Peace. There's a piece of you over here and a piece of you over there. I don't know, man. Yo, shout out to Seth MacFarlane. I really do enjoy Family him and the Orville. I was watching the Orville the other okay, day. Okay, I don't care about that. It's good, especially if you like Star Trek, which I do. It's taught, which is way more moral. Like Orville, Star Trek, they are much better lenses for discussing morals and ethics and all of that stuff. But like I said, um, and Batman. Um. Bible Breakdown Podcast at gmail.com and Batman. Batman is actually a very interesting uh, moral and ethical lens to view things through. So, um, well, anyway, send us your, uh, you know, send us some emails. Um, Twitter, we're still in jail, or I'm sorry, Instagram, we're still in jail. So, I uh, might have to start a Twitter or something. Facebook's just fucking up, y'all, but that's a whole other story. Well, here's the other anyway. thing like, by the time this airs, maybe it'll all be cleared up. Or maybe we'll just find a different platform. But anyway, yeah. reg- regardless, and Twitter, I feel like something on Only Sky Media. I've been wanting to reach out to them. They're a secular um, um, sort of what? social media platform. Only Sky. I'll send it to you. Like they have like blogs for. We would fit in there. Let me just say that. Okay. Well, you all have. A- yeah, I'm trying to get off of this, and you keep bringing up stuff. So anyway, and here's another thing. No, I'm just kidding. All right, you all have a blessed, uh, have a blessed, uh, don't do whatever that. Don't night, do that. day. Don't do that. Uh, I don't know what time it is for where y'all listen. We have oh, people no, in Australia, have, people yeah, in America. Shout out to Australia. I love y'all. In America too. Good. I love the world, man. I'm a citizen of the world. Goodbye. Yeah. How was your day, though? That's what's up. What does he drink? Okay. That's what's up. That's sweet. It's great. You've been looking great, by the way. Too enthusiastic. I think it's the haircut. Yeah, it's working. I am too. I don't, but I do want to go to sleep because I'm exhausted. It's been a busy day over here too. What? Oh my God. Yeah, also. I want to get up at the